Hey guys, welcome back to Remove Before Race, and today we're testing yet another X Class. I mean, uh. Me? No, I'm just X Class. It's all X Class these days. Um, now, today we've got the brand new X2, uh, which hasn't even launched in the UK yet, so thanks to Park Lane, obviously Park Lane, with all the lovely decals. Oh, is it a Park Lane car? It's a Park Lane I, edition, this one. I didn't really, I, I didn't notice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, know, it's yeah. very subtle. Yeah, it's very like, subtle. It might size. catch you out, that one. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, we're, we're lucky enough to have this uh, before the launch on the 1st. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about where the X2 sits in the lineup um, and whether we think it's a good option for you to have. So, Joe, this is like all the normal X cars are like on numbers, right? So you've got the X1, you've yep. got the X3, X5, they're your mainstays. And then these even number cars are like, what, the crossovers, the coupes? Yeah, I think they try to make them a bit sportier, don't they? A bit they? sportier, yeah. Uh, they're, they're almost like... Fashion it's, conscious, they say. It. But I suppose all the German brands are doing it at the moment, aren't they? And Mercedes especially. Um, they, you know, they released something and it will sell. Yeah. Um, and they're fitting all these tiny segments in the market that aren't necessarily even there to fill, but they fill them and then they sell them. Well, so. we say that, and um, but it's like the biggest growing segment at the moment. It is, it is, Which absolutely. is like part of the reason that BMW are pushing this quite hard, because they lost the most selling car, you know, number last year to Merck. Now, not that anybody really cares about these numbers other than the manufacturers themselves. Of course. But this kind of car is something that's going to push that number of sales back up because so many people want a nice small crossover. Definitely. No. So, and I think it's really, um, I'm, I'll put my hands up now and say I'm absolutely not a fan of the X4 yep. and I'm not a fan of the X6. Yeah, I think you, both, you said that a lot. Yeah, they're both pointless. To me, they're pointless by the X5 or by the X3. Yeah. But I have to say, I've got a bit of a soft spot for this one. Well, this um, one isn't styled like those either. Right? No, If it's we look not. around it, it's got much squarer sort of uh, wheel arches. Yep. Um, I think you were mentioning earlier that the lights are a lot more like the 8 Series. Yes. Upcoming. Yep. And the concept Z4. It's very, co yeah, that, the whole thing's very concept and futuristic, which I do like. They've really broken the mold, the mold in that sense. And, and I, uh, I really liked, you remember what we did on the Rock Studio M2? Oh yeah, I like CSL the way BMW homage. have copied Rock Studios. Yeah, copy us on that <laughs> it's one. like the homage, yeah. Yeah, so that um, was obviously like the Batmobile 3 litre CSL and all that. Yeah. It's nice to have that there because it, sets it apart from, I mean, it's really in shape, actually quite similar size-wise to the X1. Yep. From, from what we read about. It, it's a real, tr I know people use this this uh, this saying a lot, but it's a real real trainer-shaped car, isn't it? It's like a it real, is. like, you know. Like, like and weirdly, car. even though it's like, sits under the uh, X4 and the X6, it's not shaped like them at all. No, it's not, no, exactly. Because the new X3 that I was in a couple of days ago, actually, it could be mistaken for the X5. Yeah, because like look... you just did the M40i on exactly. your channel, didn't yeah, you? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that looks so similar to the X5 now. Uh, but as you say, and, and the X1 looks very similar to the X3, the X3. and the X5. Yeah, but as you say, this is a completely different shape. It's almost like... Um, it's almost like a, a one series that's jacked up, and, and, a, and but, but modern. And it's not bad for it either. I think it actually looks pretty damn good. And it certainly looks a more enticing prospect than, say, the X1, which is... It is, like you said, it's a shrunken X5. You almost feel yep. like you're getting the poor cousin of the family. Yep. Whereas this doesn't seem that way. It's got its own thing going on. It has. Which is quite cool. It has. Um, so tell us, as I'm sort of new to BMW, as, as we spoke about in my last vlog, yep. M badge is coming on everything now. Is that like just a, a line, like the Audi Sport thing? Or? Yeah, it's like it's like the uh, yeah S line Audi or the yeah. AMG line in, in Mercedes. Um, it's it started off small and on some models, but now it's everywhere, and it, that's why I can't stand them so much, especially on something like an M light, yeah. where it is half an M car, and that you maybe, want it on an M light. You, you want, want it on, on M. M it kind of deserves it yeah. on M light, but then the fact that the whole range has basically got them now, yeah, it, kind of, it, it just waters it down. There. Oh, it's they're like, everywhere. They're, yeah, I mean, everywhere. if you took the M badges off. Off this it would probably be half a second quicker to 60. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> the amount of weight of the badges. The amount of weight that they stick on these things with M badges. But people seem to love it, so uh, that's it. But I have to say, yeah, the keys, you just handed me the keys earlier on. Yeah. And I'm really impressed. Now, Good this nice is keys. almost like, um, so this is uh, this is the new key that BMW are using. Yeah. Um, my 7 Series, in fact, has got one. Oh, no, I've only got the... You've got the digital one. The digital key with me, which is which is another level altogether, yeah. but actually completely useless in reality because there's nowhere to put your key or anything, but it looks good. <laughs> yeah. You know, when yeah. You're down, it's you a know. party trick, isn't it's it? It's a party trick when yeah. you're at Costa Coffee. Yeah, yeah. Have you been to Costa before? No. no. Where's that? 
Oh, well, that's, that's, a cop- oh, that's, that's another story. But when you're down there talking to your mates and yeah. you're showing this, they're yeah. like, oh, look it's like at the this. OLED lights on the CS. Exactly. It's, it's your party trick, isn't it? It, it is. It so is. Speaking but, of the CS. Yeah. So the C- you must have these sort of. What the hell is that? Wait, no, that's. No, because I, I had a 116D a while ago that I was borrowing. That's no, that's your 116. Is that your CS key? Are you serious? <laughs> One sec. So you, so you buy an X2 to get that. Ni- Ninety-five thousand pounds later. <laughs> oh yeah. mate. Oh, who's? Oh, you would never guess that that's the this most. This is almost as bad as the X-Class key that I was showing last time with the <laughs> Nissan that you guys complained about and I complained about. Yeah. This is almost as bad. So that's a bit. That. That's a bit poor. A bit short change. Yeah, you know, BMW's argument would be. Yeah. It's the lightest. So therefore, the CS saving weight and yeah, all that. Yeah, that's why that's... I had paper as floor mats in the CS as well. So exactly. Fair enough. I'll, I'll let you off on that one. Um, so this trim is the M Sport. Yeah. So speaking of trims, there's actually almost an M Sport Plus now in this car, which is the M Sport X, I think they're calling. Yes. Well, you educated me on that, to be fair. Yeah. Um, I I wasn't aware of that, and I must put my hand up now. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm a BMW man, whatever, yes, but I don't know a great deal about the, the X2 in general. Yeah. It's a new, very new model. But that's great. That's what we want to uh, fresh show, eyes. show these guys with fresh eyes as they would see it, yeah. but with someone with a lot more experience than I have on BMW. Sure. But I can show everyone yep. what the M Sport X looks like compared to this, so I'll just overlay that on here. Round about now. Round about now. So it's got a bit of a different front end. It's got different side sills, bigger wheels. Yeah. But we were talking, we actually quite like this middle. I prefer the front end on this one yeah, over yeah, the other yeah, yeah. one. Um, but yeah, I mean, they both look pretty good to be fair. And uh, yeah, interesting car. I guess a lot of, um, I mean, the, other, the only other bit that's different styling wise on these is the front end is, is the kidney grills you were saying. Is it, it's like different to all the other BMWs now. Yep, it BMWs is. Now, uh, it? And I've noticed actually, I mean, it is different to all the other BMWs, but even that X3 that I was in a couple of days ago, yeah. that you can see they're changing them. They're, well, they're massive on that yeah. X3. They're huge, but it's still a similar sort of shape, whereas in this one, they've really gone. Um, yeah, it just, I don't know, it just looks slightly different, the actual shape itself. Yeah, um, it almost not, looks inverted. Yeah, they're not symmetrical anymore, yeah. and they're all sort of... Is this so, kind of like a retro look? I mean, did the older, like older, older BMs have more vertical? Yes, shape? yeah, it probably, yeah, you're, you're probably right, actually. It does look a bit more retro. Um, and they get much bigger. Oh, and it's got the active aero in there as well. The oh, active aero slats. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? So that's interesting. That that's trickled right down to the, the lower models the lower now. Models. Um, which is the case with all the German cars. You know, they start in the S-Class yeah, 7 Series and, and then they go down. down. Um, right, should we jump in and take a look at the interior? Because that's... A uh, bit warmer. A bit warmer inside, <laughs> yeah, I think. let's do that. Mm. Right. Really um, narrow door opening. It is, so it's the, quite the narrow drive. in the rear as well. Yeah. The, the rear passenger. The door's tiny, isn't it? The A pillar's literally on my shoulder here. Is that similar to the. Have you been in the X1? Uh, I have. It's a bit. The X1's bigger yeah. in the front. The rear doors aren't that big, but they're probably bigger than the rear. Um, I'd say it's similar. It's very similar door openings to the 1 Series. Yeah, and apparently the seating position quite a bit lower. Yep. Than the X1. Yeah, than the X1. Yeah, it definitely feels, it definitely feels a bit lower. I think the whole car, is the car low or not? Is the car the same height? No, the car actually, bizarrely, is a little bit higher. Okay. But the seating position, they made lower to give it almost a, sportier, a feel. sportier feel. But then you negate the thing that the school mums love of being higher than everyone else. Yes, yeah, because so uh, it doesn't necessarily feel like an SUV in here. Yeah. Um, I probably, I definitely feel higher than a one series, but not like, yeah, nowhere near an X3 it. or something. So, uh, should we fire this bad boy up? Yeah, let's do it. Get the um, heated seat, heated seats. Yes, yes, yes. On, please, nice. today. Oh, yes. Is he freezing? So, um, yeah, well, first impressions are, it looks to me, it's very, it is very X1 in here. Um, yeah. I, I recognize a lot of the switch gear as being uh, X1, um, but I like it. That's not a bad thing. And you've got the proper M Sport steering wheel, which is which is lovely. It's lovely. Um, it's a nice steering wheel. The gloss black trim isn't bad either, actually. Yeah, gloss black. I can't I personally. I can't stand the hexagon with blue trim I in any it. BMW. I think it's horrible. Um, I like the blue stitching and the blue yes. details, it, especially as it's a blue car. But I just don't like the hexagon and blue trim. In the yellow car, I saw it had all yellow stitching, which actually looked really, really nice. Oh, nice. With all the Alcantara. Yep. Yep. Um, unfortunately, this one's got the smaller screen, but it is still the new touchscreen iDrive. Oh, I didn't. 
didn't know they'd done that. Yeah. So, now, so this is not the Pro Nav, but it's got, but it's but now it's touch got, screen. It's, it's got the touch screen. Wow. So you miss out on stuff like the split screen. Of course. I'm not sure whether you can get Apple CarPlay on the smaller one either. Okay. But it is otherwise just as good. You can see it's the same, yeah, the same graphics, same the same UI, everything. Really fast. So um, yeah. Hey, you're teaching me BMW things that I didn't even know about. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> This I is need really to learn bad. something about AMG that you know. <laughs> one second, Mike. <laughs> F1 Mike, help. <laughs> F1 Mike, can you tell me something? No, not in German, mate. Not in German. Because <laughs> he's never building engines. He's only answering questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all. I don't know how he fits. Anyway, we're going off subject. I don't know, I don't know how, how he that. fits everything in. If the guy's a genius. Oh, I also got you some BMW water. Oh, brilliant, mate. Fantastic. Yep. That's that will go straight into. Yeah. I, I operate think, much better on BMW water. I think perhaps drinking this is what's ruined me. Really? You think they spiked have, it with have something? Have you not been very well since? No, I haven't. Uh, I've just been picking up more and more BMWs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I actually have some of that? You actually can. Thank you, mate. Brilliant. I am quite I'll thirsty. join you as well. Thank you very much. So, uh, Cheers, BMW. More brandy. I'm surprised it's not spiked. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not spiked. Yeah, it's not spiked. 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 It's the heat coming through the seats, and I tell you what, these are like the Alcantara cloth seats. Yeah. Um, and they're brilliant this time of year because as, mu as much as lead is amazing and it comes in many premium cars, it takes so long for them to heat up when it's like zero degrees. It's true. So. We're in the car. We're in the car. It's We're rolling, it's snowing. It's snowing, but it's lovely and snug in here. It's nice in here, actually. This is all very pointy towards the driver, isn't it? It is driver-centric, and, and I think this is what BMW have really started doing with all their very latest generation cars. Yeah. It, and it harks back to the older cars, like the E36 era, sort of 80s, 90s, where- so they had a slant. Yeah, sort of, or they? everything did face towards the driver, and yeah. I think that's really cool. For me, anyway, like as, as sort of, yeah, as a historic BMW man, it's it's quite it's quite a nice feeling, um, and it's good that you don't get in a right-hand drive car, seeing as it's German. Yes, and everything's still not facing you because that would be a bit weird. That would be very weird. Yeah. Be a bit of a cheapskate. But even as JL a passenger, you can kind of. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Honest opinions here, as always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can count on us for that. Yeah. But as a passenger, I can still sort of... It's not like it's inaccessible to me, or I can't see things properly, so it's no, all right. No, totally. Yeah, it's not like it's taking anything away from, from the passenger. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, as a driver, it feels great. A lot of things to hold on to. Yeah, I can't think... Yeah, I can't think... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, it's... Um, it's, it's uh, yeah, well, I've, I've spent sort of, what, 20 minutes behind the wheel, half an hour, maybe. Yeah. And I have to say, so firstly, cabin noise, tire roar, oh, as we get into a really rough bit of tarmac. But I have to say, at this bit of road that we're on, we're in South Bucks, terrible. Terrible, terrible. And this bit of road that we're on is actually really bad in most cars. Like you get so much tire roar. And I have to say, in this particular car, it's really quiet. It is quiet. And I think, I was saying to you earlier, one of the big selling points for me on this car it's just how good the sound deadening is. Yeah, because it, it spreads hear... beyond the tyres yeah. onto... Well, we, we've got what would normally be a noisy four-pot diesel engine, and no matter how much you put your foot down, it's not that unpleasant sound that you would expect. It's really not, and now this so... is this is the same two-litre um, four-pot diesel that I'm used to in like the 320D. It's in all yeah. the 20D variants yeah. and 18D. So it's a, engine, you know, it's, it's a good engine. It's a good engine. Reliable. Reliable, yeah. economical, and actually really powerful and yeah. fast. Talk but me. there's no sound. No, normally it's horrible. It. Normally it's, it's a, well not horrible, normally it's very unpleasing to yeah. the ear. Um, but in this thing it's so quiet and so sound deadened that it's, um, it, it actually makes, yeah it's lovely. You forget that you're in, when you're on the move, yeah. initially, Okay, you can hear a bit of diesel. That's pleasant. Clutter. That's pleasant, but then once you're rolling, you can't hear it at all. Like there's nothing. Um, so yeah, in terms of like, I mean, it sounded almost petrol-like when you put your foot down there. It did, yeah. Rather than rather than it, it's true. That. And it revs out nice to about four and a half thousand. Um, I don't expect that coming into a, a two-liter uh, diesel engine. And like coming, I've driven GLA two twenty. Yep. Um, you know your equivalent C classes as well. And they just sound, even the E Class, to be honest, E220, it just sounds wrong. It does. It's not what you expect. It's in not such what a you premium. want. It's no. not what you want in a in a car that you'll inevitably do a lot of mileage in. No, exactly. Um, you want this kind of 
sound deadening, nice and luxurious, more like a petrol car. Yep. I mean, this is how good the diesels are becoming now that now that they want to be axed. Yes, it, well, that's the uh, it's a catch here, isn't it? It is. Like diesels have become so good. Yeah. And now the government and the whole world hates them, and it's like, oh, are you serious? First, they convince them to buy, convince us to buy diesel, diesel, diesel. Yep. Now and that they, everyone's got them, yeah, it's like, uh, actually, no petrol. Yep. Or now we're going to charge you more for parking in the city, and yep. <laughs> uh, for me, again, driving position is always important as a six foot four giant, yep. and I have to say, I, I feel like it could be in pretty much any well, other you've BMW. Got loads of headroom. Yeah. Loads of headroom. You're sitting um, quite low. I mean, we discussed it's quite car-like in terms of the seating position. It is. That might be a plus for you, or uh, if you prefer to sit higher in an SUV, you're not really going to get as much of that in this no. as you would in, say, the X1, maybe. Exactly. But, and, I, and I think driving dynamics are very uh, uh, more similar to a car than, than an SUV. Yeah. Uh, but saying that, I've pushed it a little bit hard, and you can feel that there is, there is a bit of weight and a bit of movement. Um, now, the negative, I have to say, the one negative, and I, and I noticed this almost immediately after putting out your place, is the ride quality is not great. Mm, it's They're, quite firm. It's quite firm. It's a bit choppy. It's a bit BMW of the last generation in that sense. Um, it's definitely not plush. I wouldn't call it plush. But then this has got what size wheels are on this? Are they 18s or 19s? I think they're 19s on this one. Yeah. So I think with the smaller wheel option, it would be, a, as with all cars, yeah. you get a better ride. It's not terrible, but it's a bit crashy. And if I'm being picky, that's what I'd yeah. say. Yeah. yeah, so space-wise in here, as we we're talking about the driving position, I, I feel I feel it sits somewhere between, say, the 1 Series and the X1. Yeah. Um, but I think the only X1s I've ever tried have got sunroofs. And as soon as you've got a sunroof, as you know, and the light comes in, yeah, it makes yeah. a I think if this had a sunroof, it would feel 10% larger in here instantly. So, and looking around the cabin, I've sat in the back and, and, and played around with my driving position being here, mm. and it does fit for adults in here. Um, I think it's very similar to the X1. So if, if you were on the fence about, oh God, is this going to be less practical daily compared to buying an X1, yep. I think you're going to lose very little in terms of cabin space. Definitely. And even boot space. I mean, there's not, yeah. I'm guessing it's probably a, a bit in every area, but not. it's not night and day. Um, well, and the boot that, space is actually pre pretty much almost class leading. I think the only one that's got a tiny bit more is the E-Pace. It's right. got l shed loads more than the GLA, which is got a bit of a joke as a boot, yep. uh, even less than the A-Class, I think. Wow, that's uh, right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a weird one. And yeah. then it's it's got more than the Q3 as well. Okay. So in that sense, it's actually doing pretty damn good. Yep. Uh, the only other thing you could say is maybe kids sitting in the back, you've got like narrow windows compared to, you know, the X1, but... Yes. And you, not... do, you do notice that again, uh, compared to the X3 that I was in recently, the, the the window space, the, the, the aperture between yeah. the bottom and the top of the, all the windows yeah. is a lot thinner. But that is that's solely down to the styling. Yeah. It, you know, bigger windows make it look a bit uglier, if anything, and a bit more SUV. It does. And, and to give, it, it's a catch-22. It's a bit like the Evoque. I'm not a massive fan of the Evoque, but the Evoque, if you get inside one of them, the mm. windows are tiny, but then it gives you that good aesthetic look on the outside. Which is exactly what they're going for, because they were very heavily targeting the Evoque in this car. Right. Because JLR took such a big piece of the pie when that came out, and all the German manufacturers were very slow to the game, to yep. be honest. Yep. So this is like them playing catch-up now. Sure. This is the one thing that I think might play against this car going into the future. You can't get any option of a full digital dash. At the moment, you've got... What is this, Joe? It's like a part analog? Yeah, part. I think they call it an uh, LCD backlit yeah. uh, dashboard. And it's, it's pleasant to look at. It is. It's it's basically it's what's going to be in my M140. So yes. it's in all the new LCI2 um, M140, uh, sorry, uh, 1 series. Yeah. And I, because I'm a big lover of analog. Mm. Um, like a nice watch. Exactly. Yeah. And call me old school. Now, I prefer full analog, um, but then now digital are getting so good that I, I am growing to like them. I think early digital ones were a bit... Mm, yeah, a they bit were a bit naff. naff. I yeah. think w what you're getting now is when you change modes and then the instrument cluster changes based on what you want to see in that mode, that yes. is really cool. It's really... And I think Audi, to be fair, make the best. Oh, in, yeah. In the, I mean, they're so pin... You know, they're so sharp. Well, they were the first to the game and to really bring... I mean, you look at the current 
uh, Q3, which is you know the the one to put against this yep. particular car. Yep. It, it's got that digital dash already. It's there. It does. Um, and they've had it. They've got it now in the RS3. They've got it. You know, yep. all across the board basically. Yes. And it it makes their cars all seem so much more premium as soon as you jump in. Yes. Now you and I are of an older school of thought. We like the analog. Yep. But the majority of buyers now are going to be looking for that. And you think now when the new GLA comes out, yep. it's going to in inevitably nick that lovely new interior off the new A class, yep. which has got the massive, you know, screen, screen from yep. the E class. Sure. So that's why I'm thinking. The lack of that, despite how we like it, um, it, it might play against this car, you know, a couple of years down the line. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, but personally, I love this setup yeah. because I think it's it's analog mixed with semi digital or backlit stuff. Um, but also, what I love about it is BMW went through a weird phase again in the previous generation of having full analog. Yeah. Again, like your M2 probably had, and then there was like a digital display underneath. Yes. But it looked. It, it didn't quite blend in with the whole dash. No. Whereas this, this is does, seamless. This is seamless. Yeah. And we've got the benefits of having a bit of analog and the seamless digital. And one thing that I must note that I really like is is the fact that it's got a digital big digital speedo readout at the bottom, which yeah. is really important. And I think it's really it's really good to have because yeah, BMW have not done that. The legibility is important for that kind of stuff. Really and is. you almost can't tell whether it's a screen or whether it's LED backlit. You can't. No, no, you can't at all. Um, you have to almost double back and think, is that a screen or is that analog? Or Exactly. It's quite and clever. it's only when you turn it off and you look closely that you can see the numbers and mm. stuff underneath. So this particular car is an X-Drive. You yep. can get it in S-Drive -drive as well, yep. which is front-wheel drive, front drive. BMW Talk. I think that's on the petrol cars at the moment. Okay. Um, and then these bigger diesel engines get the X-Drive. Right, okay. That makes sense. And... I mean, I've experienced lots of different versions of X-Drive, um, probably the best being in the Alpinas where they send a lot of rear bias yeah. uh, and it makes the car actually feel rear wheel driven up to a point when you then need the four wheel drive. And, and it then it kicks in, in. Yeah, yeah, which perfect. is great, so it's a great system. Um, which is probably similar to like, the E63. E63, yeah, yeah. yeah that's um, right. And that's, that's what I always think and the Focus RS things like that. Four wheel drive gets sniffed at, or all wheel drive. People are like, oh, wheel drivers, including myself, at, uh, even a couple of years ago. But mm. when you try one that's set up well and is rear bias or adjusts, yeah, it's it's it, you know it's, it's so hard to doubt it because it does everything, yeah. then doesn't it? And it becomes such a capable car. Absolutely. But with this one, um, the little that I've driven of it, and you can fill us in a little bit. Yep. The issue that a lot of these smaller crossovers have is that they feel too front wheel drive. Yep. And certainly the GLA, even the A45, always feels so much more front wheel than it ever does, you know, full uh, full fat 4x4. Four four. Sure. But th this feels quite quite a genuine... It feels quite balanced. Now, unfortunately, it's not raining or snowing today, yeah. and we're not really on uh, roads that, that allow us to, to really push it in and, and feel, you know, feel what it, if it rotates on, on acceleration or whatever. Yeah. But it certainly doesn't feel um, too front wheel drive to me. Yeah. Um, let's just see if we can come out of here. Let's just boot it out of here. It'd be interesting oh, to actually, see. I can, feel the, I can feel the back wheels then spinning. Spinning, yeah. And then it fell it to the, to the front, but it just efficiency is just gone. Like, you know, like, and that was with everything turned off as well. There was no. It didn't seem like it, did it? It no. just seemed like it, it controlled it itself. Controlled it itself. Um, and I always find that with the X Drive systems, in fact, that lovely C43 that, yeah. that you um, got me the keys to, I said that in that, in that in that video that actually when you turned all the systems off, it was so much better. Mm. Um, and I know the systems, people should leave them on and on, on the road and stuff. Um, I'll put my one back on. But in, in, in a lot of the cars, a lot of the X Drive, the all wheel drive cars, they're so capable that you just, you know, with them all turned off, they're just, they're on another level, you know. They are. They're, they're really, really, really good. I'm not a fan of these part front wheel drive, sometimes four wheel drive systems. No. I much prefer this where it is, it, it, fine, it's got a lot of nannying, yep. but you can put 100% of the power where it needs to be. Yep. 100% and it still combines efficiency which is which is something that the old systems didn't used yeah. to do. One question then, considering the price is about what 38 or yeah. th 37 on this particular one, 38 for the M Sport X, um, would you still take this over a 3 Series Touring? It's a difficult question because I'm I love the Tourings, I love wagons and estates and, and, and the, and the three is like it's it's like 
the leader. It is. It's you so know? resolved, isn't yeah. it? It just looks the business. So probably not, but I think the majority of people probably would. Yeah. If that makes sense. It's a tough one. It depends. You know, style your thing. Drivability, we'd probably argue the three is better. Yep. But having a small compact SUV has its own merits, I guess. Yep. Over like, I mean, it is a much, I'm, I'm sure it's a much longer car, the three touring. Yep. Than this. So yep. it's a probably tough one. A bit more stable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And it's got the petrol head appeal. It has. Going back to the beginning of this video, when we're talking about how they, they're filling so many segments. Yeah, it's true. Now, even if you're a BMW man or a Mercedes man or whatever, yeah. you've then got the headache of it's okay, all overlapping, well, isn't it? Yeah, I've got my forty grand. What yeah. do I buy? Do I buy an X1? Do I buy an X2? Do I buy a three series Touring? You know, there's so M140i, many. And one forty i, you know, it's one, all the same. Well, one forty i, if you've got brains, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And looks. And oh, what are you yeah, saying? Well, you oh, go. you mean the car? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so to conclude then, I'm pretty damn impressed with this, and I didn't think I would be. I thought this is going to be a struggle to make this review interesting. But this is a really, really viable car to pick as a everyday sort of small 4x4. Yeah, no, I'll have to agree, mate. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier on, I think aesthetically I thought it was going to be really challenged, but in reality and the more pictures I see of it I really like it yeah <laughs> secretly don't tell anyone <laughs> no one knows no one knows it's a no. private conversation <laughs> just that just between you and I yeah. okay. um, no, I agree with you I really like the way that the shoulders are really quite strong yep. the new lights are awesome I love the way the new 8 series looks anyway yes um, I can't wait to see what it looks like but for this to have that kind of styling the new Kidley grill is I like the bigger grills yep uh, being a Merc man that's no surprise yeah so <laughs> No, I think it looks really intimidating, and I actually really liked the yellow one that they had, which was the M Sport X yep. at, at Park Lane. So if you guys want to take a look at that, it's probably still in their showroom. Yep. Um, that looked really impressive as well, but this one is probably the sweet spot So in terms of looks. But no, it's, it's, it's really impressive, and I think we've both concluded that if you're worried as a potential X1 driver or, a, or someone who's weighing up X1 and X2, this car actually doesn't lose a lot at all compared to the X1. No. Would, you, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I totally agree with that. And I have to say, all they need to do now is bring out a X2 40i or M40i oh. or whatever they call it. I mean, it's got the exhaust in it already, yeah, this thing. You know? It's got the proper exhaust. I think this with the B58 in it, oh, I mean, yes. That, so, could, that could potentially even be a car that even someone like you would be quite interested in. Yeah, no, honestly, I think that would be, that'd be really cool. I can imagine with specific wheels, lowered slightly, you know, in performance brakes, it'd be a little pocket rocket. Well, you heard Mr. BMW himself. BMW, come on, guys, you need to get a, an M light version of this car out. I think it would be really exciting. And um, clearly, I mean, the competition, what they've got, the, there's a, the GLA 45, the new one is going to be a pretty crazy car at 450 brakes so I think we need wow. to definitely see something here yeah from, yep. from BMW they need to play their cards right but um, guys thank you for watching Hope, hopefully that was informative if you're considering the new X2 you're just curious about this car uh, as always it's a pleasure to have Mr. BMW himself here with us um, but yeah please do like and subscribe uh, check out Joe's channel as well uh, we've got some more interesting stuff vis-a-vis -vis BMW coming soon, including what Joe has just tested, which is the M40i, I believe it's called. Yeah, the X3 M40i, yeah, exactly. So we'll be testing that on Remove Before Race soon as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers, guys. And it starts to snow. And it starts to snow. <laughs>
Thank God. Do you like this BMW water? I think that's mine. Oh, that's yours. Oh shit, sorry. Yeah, that's mine. That is yours. Yeah. Don't touch my BMW water, mate. I'm really sorry. You're buying my cars and now you're stealing my BMW water. I don't, I don't like having the nipple on there. Yeah, you tell me you love nipples. I prefer a bigger, sorry. <laughs> Handling. God, this X. Mate, that is so wait. impressive. Oh, that's. That's the X2. I thought this was the X2. You said it was blue and white, right? No, no, this is, the, this is the S drive. Oh, this is the S? Yeah. Oh, it's two wheel drive? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's okay. got the same. Um, it's really agile. It feels know. like it's got a super short wheelbase. Um, yeah, yeah, it's almost it go kart like. Unfortunately, it doesn't get side race, so Sid wouldn't like it. I'm sure he could. He could probably still drift it, but, um, but yeah, I'm interested. I, like, amazing. Loads of boot space. Um, yeah, it's really. Same shitty engine. <laughs> <laughs> yep, same four pot in there. Same four um, pot. No, I'm really, I'm really impressed with it. I have to say, um, hats off to you, BMW. I'm, Absolutely, I'm really, and, really and impressed. The colour, the colour, decals, brilliant. Absolutely love oh. it. Even the alloys are pretty. <laughs> They're pretty swanky. Are they the M Sport? The M Sport Plus 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 Plus. <laughs> <laughs> are they the AMG line M Sport? AMG S -line? line S lines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant, mate. Anyway. I've got a shoot, so um, thanks a lot, man. That was really nice. Thanks for the uh, car. Check. Hang on, the keys of this are better Cheers, than mate. my CS. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your CS key you're just doing there? <laughs> Does it go off road? It's meant to be an off roader. One sec. Wow, it does, it goes off road. It's not just, it's a real X drive. I love it. Good work. Anyway. It's almost like the BMW G Wagon. The square. BMW, yes, it yeah. is. Although it probably handles better than handles the G Wagon. Handles better than the G Wagon, yeah. yeah. I'd have to give you that. But it wouldn't sound anywhere near as I good. I probably need to get that key back. 